Hey, what is going on, you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Well, the new Gamer Heaven 2.0, new house, new version of the Gamer Heaven. Hey, baby. You want to help me do a review today? Hell yeah, you love these cheap Chinese controllers, don't you? So, we have a premium PS4 controller. So what does that mean? Well, it's a DualShock 4 controller. It's meant for a PS4, but it has paddles on the back, as well as uh, some pretty interesting triggers. I have already played with this. Uh, I did put it back in its original box so I can do the unboxing experience for you guys, because you guys on YouTube love that. Uh, but it's got some interesting triggers. They're not mechanical, but they definitely are on or off. There is no linear, you know, they would not work for a racing game. Uh, very short pull on them, which could be good for a shooting game. But without further ado, let's crack into this bad boy, see if it's any good. Alrighty, yeah, so this is more or less the new setup that you're going to be seeing on the channel. Uh, a lot different from my previous room, but I've got to say, I'm actually liking this a whole hell of a lot more. Uh, for one, this room is a lot more spacious. It has a huge open window here, which creates a lot of natural sunlight. It is night right now, uh, but that will help a lot to get some pretty sweet footage. Not to mention, I did upgrade my desk, and I absolutely love this. It has kind of a cement look on the top, all white to go with that theme. Uh, and just a ton of desk space too. It has, you know, a room over here, a space over here where I can do actual standing unboxings, which is great. Uh, and just, I, I, I love the desk, I, I gotta say. Uh, I will have the desk and, you know, my chair and just things you'll see around the room linked in the description below if you wanna check them out. But I gotta say, the desk, two thumbs up, one thumb in. Alrighty guys, over here at the desk for the first official unbox. Wow, that got some, I got some spin on it, boys. It's like spin the bottle, but it's spin the shitty controller. So you got this little sleeve on the outside. Very cheap packaging, as you can tell, just basic cardboard. You're not going to get any, you know, memory cut foam holding the controller in there or anything like that. You are going to get a very basic four foot rubberized, no braided or anything like that, uh, USB cable to pair and charge the controller. You are going to get a couple of rubber, uh, rubbers, boys, a couple of rubber hand grips that you can slide over for additional grip and also uh, to make the controller a little bit wider in the palm if you have larger hands. You have your actual controller right here. You're going to have a quality assurance card telling you you can return it within 45 days or get a replacement within 75 days and you've got a three-year warranty. I would not bank on getting this warranty uh honored or fulfilled or anything like that because I mean generally when you buy these cheap Chinese products the quality control is not great and then their customer service is non-existent if you can get a hold of the number on here uh, a lot of times they'll just bounce you back and forth between people or you just can't understand what the fuck they're saying so um, there's that then you also have your instruction manual right here Right, you got some Egyptian hieroglyphics right there. Uh, you have English right here. Uh, no pictures or anything, but I do like that it's very clear, easy to read, large font. For somebody like myself that's in his 60s, it's good. Uh, I, I don't have the eyes of an eagle like I did when I was a teenager. So the fact that I can read this is very nice. And this shows you how to uh, program the back buttons, which is really cool. Um, that's been a complaint of mine in the past with some of these cheap controllers that have paddles is that you are set to the preset, which is generally uh, X, circle, triangle, and um, square. Sometimes it's a little bit different, but that's the general default layout. So for this video, I'm just using one softbox for my lighting. So let me know in the description below if it's good, if it could be better, if it's absolute dog shit, uh, or if it stimulates you. So holding this controller here, uh, ergonomically, it's really good. Like, seriously good. Uh, it fits in the hand great. I'm not a huge fan of the stock Sony DualShock 4 controllers. Um, I, they're not terrible. I've definitely tested less ergonomically correct controllers, but for me, I just don't like these skinny little handles they have here. I prefer the feeling of a uh, Microsoft Xbox controller or, you know, a lot of the third-party companies even a lot of the third-party companies that make controllers for PlayStation uh, go with a more Xboxy design because, well, it fits most hands better. It's an ergonom ergonomically more correct, that kind of boomerang shape, as where this is just like, you know, two little chodes sticking off the bottom here. So, um, 
yeah, this feels really good. Analog sticks feel really good. Uh, good resistance to them. You don't really have a very um, large dead zone, so as soon as you start aiming or walking, uh, when I was playing this with, uh, I was playing some Uncharted just to bring me back to the good old days, and uh, man, it, they're very responsive. I was surprised. So the analog sticks feel good, great resistance, they feel phenomenal. L3 and R3, nice tactile click to them. Uh, the face buttons are okay. They're better than a stock PlayStation controller, which to me feel a little bit mushy because they have that like mecha membrane uh, underneath there where they have that rubber pad basically. Uh, and I'm sure this has that too, but it is a lot more crisp and tactile. I also like the share and options buttons more than a stock DualShock 4 controller because I've mentioned this many times. Uh, these are sunken into the front face shell, so you have to like... I mean, you can hit them, don't get me wrong, but if you have some big thumbs or something like that, you're probably going to have to use like your fingernail or something to hit them, uh, just because they're, you know, damn near flush with the front shell. As where a lot of aftermarket controllers, this one included, the share and options buttons are actually raised up about a quarter of an inch. Now, ladies, you might think a quarter inch might not make a difference. It does, sweetheart, it does. So, uh, yeah, they feel great, tactile, clicky, uh, raised up out of the shell. Uh, the touch bar works. I used it. Um, it, it it's an interesting shape. Uh, I think it looks cool. It works um, just fine. Bumpers feel a little bit better than stock, I would say. They have a nice, satisfying click to them. Then your D-pad here, you do have this magnetized wheel that you can take off. Uh, and, and the D-pad feels great. Much, much better than a stock PS4 or Xbox controller, which the D-pad is just one piece, so basically it feels kind of mushy, right? This, you can hear, has a tactile click to it. As we're over here, silent, like a fucking ninja. So, I like that. Um, Quite a bit. And it's not a loud click, so if you are streaming or something like that, or you have a headset on and you're chatting with your boys, they're not going to hear that click or anything. It's not super loud, but you get that satisfying tactile click like you do with like a mechanical keyboard, which is great. Now, the wheel, I, I would recommend keeping on there. I, for one, I think it looks cosmetically pleasing, but uh, this is great for fighting games. If you're trying to bust out those combos and stuff, that's kind of what this wheel is for. Uh, but, I mean, you can use it for any game, honestly. Uh, the triggers here. So, these would not be good for a racing game or anything like that because they're not linear where they have a full, you know, range of adjustment where you can manipulate the gas and brake in a car, right? Uh, this would not be good for a racing game. They're not like a mechanical, um, like for example, the higher end scuffs, you can get an optional mechanical bumper and trigger, which feel just like a, a mouse click. So it's just like click, 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 click. This isn't like click, 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 but it's also not like squeeze, squeeze, mush, mush. It's uh, it's either on or off. Like once you start squeezing it, it goes instantly down and that's it. It's like zero or a hundred. Real quick. Drake. So, um, yeah, there's that. You have a micro USB on the top for charging and pairing. Not going to get, you know, USB-C or anything like that. So you have a pretty cool light bar up here. I like the shape of it. I think it's pretty sleek and whatnot. And then you have these two LEDs right here. Uh, these will illuminate whatever color the light bar would be, so blue, red, etc. When you're charging, they will be uh, yellow, I believe it was. Yellow, I think. And then when it's done charging, it goes solid white. So this is cool. They have multiple LEDs in there. Uh, the speaker works, but it's not great. I mean, it's just a tiny little speaker, but a lot of people just turn those off anyway. Uh, you know, <laughs> I turn them off because I've had too many experiences where... Somebody's asleep next to me in bed, you know, before I got separated, it'd be my wife, but you know, now it's one of the, one of the, the lady callers. So anyway, they're asleep in bed, right? And then I have headphones on or I have the TV down pretty quiet or whatever, but the speaker in here is at like 80 or hundred percent. So like a cop radio starts going off or something and it's fucking screaming out of here and they start flipping out and then I'm grabbing the gun and my dogs fucking bite me in the nutsack. It's just a not fun time for anybody really. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so most people just turn these speakers down anyway because they're really hollow, really tinny, zero bass. I mean, the speaker's like that big, so, um, it's like the size of my brain. It's about that big. 
uh, the paddles in the back, okay? M1 and 2 and N, as in Nancy, 1 and 2. They are up and out of the way, so you're not going to accidentally actuate them. But, um, you know, I've had no issue hitting them, but for some people that have a little bit thicker, not bony fingers like mine, if you have sausagey fingers, um, it might be kind of difficult to hit these, but they aren't sunken into the shell. They are raised up out of the shell, as you can see. Um, so I've had no issues hitting them. You can hit the bottom two with the tips of your finger, and then with the little bone ball right there, you can actually hit the top two. Or you can just slide your fingers up and down if you prefer to do that. Or you can play like that if you're some kind of a fucking weirdo. Um, but for me, I can hit all four of them. One, two, three, four, no problem. Um, and they are remappable, which is really cool. Uh, you do also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the bottom, of course. I did test it, it does work. Um, I didn't have the issue that a lot of controllers have where you get some kind of a weird like humming or buzzing reverberating into your uh, headset. Uh, for me personally, I use a Bluetooth headset when I'm gaming on both PlayStation and on my PC over here. It's the same headset and they work on both. You have this little dongle here that plugs into your console. It's wireless and I don't have to worry about, you know, having a wire connected to my controller. And, you know, these are these are just badass. I've already reviewed them. Um, but if you do use a wired headset, which I did test out, you didn't get that reverb or that humming where, you know, it's like having your prom date <laughs> breathe in your, in your fucking ear. So that's nice. You also have these little rubbers here. I'm not 100% sure how you get them on. I haven't been able to because you already have this nice grippy rubber coating on here, which I like a lot. It's got this textured pattern. Gives you phenomenal grip if you're trying to sling it across the room or something. You can get some good range with it because of that grip. Um, these, I guess, can go over them, but to me, I, 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 don't, I don't know how they go on because you have to really finagle them on there. I guess I could lube them up with some petroleum jelly or something or some KY and get them on there, but not even worth it because these grips are good enough. But I, I would keep these, I guess, and dick around with them, maybe get them on there. All right, so these instructions are always very, very fun to read. Uh, just because, well, they're not grammatically correct, but when controller connected, simultaneously press the share button, bam, and a function button. Function is any of these four buttons in the back there. So you do that, it'll enter programming mode, and then you press any programmable button first, D-pad, face buttons, both bumpers, both triggers, or L3 and R3. So you can map any of those to the paddles, which is pretty cool, but generally, you're probably just gonna do the face buttons. It makes the most sense. Um, unless you're playing a game like Days Gone, where you have to press like left to heal real quick, and sometimes you're trying to run away from a horde and you just wanna quickly do that and not have to stop, get gnawed on, and then heal. Uh, but yeah, so remapping is very simple. Once it starts flashing, you press whatever button you want, and then the paddle on the back. So the absolute coolest feature about this controller, hands down, in my opinion, besides the fact the paddles are actually really good and all the buttons feel better than a stock PS4 controller, and this is $45.88, is the fact that, you see that little black ring there? Well, there's a little tool right back here. If I can get my fingernail in there. Bam. And you can actually swap the D-pad module with the left thumbstick if you don't want to have the symmetrical thumbsticks like a traditional PlayStation controller and you prefer the offset design of, say, for example, like the Xbox controller or a lot of other third-party companies, Razer, they all have their sticks like this, uh, which feels really good, and I actually prefer that. Don't get me wrong, I can game like this, no problem, but I prefer to have my sticks offset. I do not like the uh, linear or side-by-side, -side, not linear, um, Symmetrical? There's another word for it I can't think of, but you know what I mean. So really cool that you can swap those two because the only other premium controller that allows you to do that is an Astro C40, which retailed for MSRP of $200, and now they are like virtually impossible to find. Uh, I don't know why, they're not even that great of a controller. I reviewed it on this channel, um, but I guess they, they're just hard to come by now. So uh, they're on eBay right now for about $350, right next to those, you know, $2,000 PlayStation 5s and stuff. So, I mean, $300, $45 does the same thing. Feels actually ergonomically better with these rubber grips and everything. 
It's a no-brainer for me. I mean, I have no brain, so it's definitely a no-brainer, but I'm gonna show you guys how to swap this sucker out real quick. So you're gonna go ahead and remove this D-pad wheel, then you're gonna get a fingernail up underneath this magnetized cover. It actually wasn't that difficult at all. Uh, and it just pops off like that. Then you're gonna use this tool, which again, we got off the little slot back here in the ass end. And there's like two little Phillips head, or I'm sorry, a flat head looking screws in there. You're gonna loosen those up. Now, with those uh, pointing towards these arrows here, you're gonna use this little screw tool to move these towards those arrows on there. Hopefully you can see that. And you have your actual module here now, and you can just go ahead and swap them, which is really kick-ass. So they don't pull out or anything like that, near do I. Uh, but what you can do is just flip around the entire module like that. Drops right back in, strap these bad boys back down. Bam. Bam, thank you, ma'am. Put this magnetized cover back on. Put this bad boy back on. Bam. That's pretty goddamn cool. So what I really like about this controller is the triggers, first of all, not good for racing games because they're basically on or off, on or off. And they're not like lockable where you have trigger locks where if you're playing a racing game, you can just turn them off and have a full linear squeeze. They're either on or off. So these would be great for a shooting game or RPG, any kind of game that's not a racing game or something that requires you to carefully manipulate the triggers. Um, so that, that might be a con for you if you play a lot of racing games and you can only afford one controller to be a do-it-all, do it a very versatile controller. Uh, but facts are, you know, you, you're probably just trying to buy a second controller, you know, so you can play with your friend or something like that. $45 for something that does everything that the $300 Astro C40 does. Um, I mean, I'm super impressed with this. Ergonomically feels phenomenal. Now, what I would do and I'm going to do is add some uh, aftermarket thumbsticks on here, like some control freaks or something like that. I have an entire bag full of, um, you know, add-on, snap-on thumbsticks that'll lift these up a little bit so you get a little bit more control over them, not to mention they'll just feel a little bit better on your thumbs. Um, so that's something I would do. In case you guys are new to the channel and did not know this, I build custom controllers. I have a small business doing it. Pictures on screen here. So I have plenty of experience customizing controllers, and that's literally all I would do to this one. I think cosmetically it looks good. Not a huge fan of the, the syphilis urine green here, but it looks good and it feels good. So I would probably just put on some thumbstick caps and call it a day. But you know what? Say you barely play on PlayStation. You want to use this on PC. Oh, we got a PC over there. Let's see if it hooks up. Alrighty boys, so we're plugged into one of the USB ports on the top of my tower here. And as you see, I'm in Steam big picture mode. I am browsing the menu right now, has full functionality. I went into the options um, of Big Picture Steam and checked all the buttons. They are automatically registered to whatever they should be. I didn't have to remap anything, which is pretty cool. Uh, I did play a little bit of Rise of the Tomb Raider just to make sure everything worked. Yes, the paddles all worked and all that stuff. So it is usable for PC. However, a little caveat to that, if you try and launch a game outside of Steam and just play a game that you have installed to your desktop, it might not work for you. Rise of the Tomb Raider did not work for me at all. It didn't register the controller until I launched it through Steam, then it worked. So uh, generally Steam is a very, very good program for, uh, you know, random miscellaneous cheap third-party controllers because it automatically can detect it, install any drivers it needs or anything, um, and just makes it kind of plug and play, which is cool. So yes, it does work over here. It does work in the living room on the PlayStation. And all in all, I mean, my final thoughts here, I gotta say, I am extremely impressed with it, especially for the price. I mean, $45, um, being able to swap thumbstick modules like that is really fucking cool. Um, I also gotta say, just the build quality feels pretty good. It doesn't feel like a $45 controller, which is uh, pretty cool. It doesn't, you don't hear any creaks or moans and groans in it. Um, the plastics are pretty cheap and everything, obviously, but I mean, even a licensed Sony or Microsoft controller, those feel cheap and plasticky. It's not until you start getting up in the two, three hundred dollar, you know, scuffs and uh, razors and aims and battle beavers and my controllers, stuff like that, where you start being like, wow, these feel like premium materials. Um, and you're not going to get that in something like this, but what you are going to get four good battles, swappable thumbsticks, good triggers, great face buttons, nice ergonomics. I, I, I can't say enough good things about it. I mean, this is by far the best value I have ever tested 
uh, on this channel for PlayStation or Xbox, PC, anything. Um, yeah, I mean, this thing's fucking pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I'll have a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Oh, that is an affiliate link, by the way. I should probably mention that. You won't pay an extra dime, but I get, I don't know, half of a penny. But enough of you guys use my affiliate link, and I might be able to buy myself lunch. So technically, you took me out to lunch. All right, guys, peace.